I just want to give everyone, you know, you just have my permission to give yourself a break because we live in an age with too many options and too many details. And that's just true. So yeah, sure. you're not broken. Um, it's the malady of our age. So then I think it's, it's important to face the fact that if you would slow down to speed up and by that, we mean put some systems in place so that you're not having to do each transaction as though it were the first time. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, what do you have for us today? Well, we're talking about <laughs> slow down to speed up. It's what are the systems that you need to run your business? And and I prefer to say slow down to speed up because I think that's really what, what it's going to feel like. Um, you and I see a lot of agents wing it, right? Mm -hmm. We take what shows up. We respond, right? We're in reaction mode. And I think anyone who has done, you know, self-growth work or, or self-help stuff knows, you know, don't be reactive, be proactive. So we've heard this before, but it's still, it's still a really big challenge. And I think being proactive in, um, in an age of such massive technology innovation feels next to impossible. And I think we sort of blame ourselves. What's wrong with me that I'm so disorganized? What's, you know, I'm just not that person that just mm -hmm. doesn't work. That's for organized people. That's just not me. And the truth is most of us have this problem. Like you, you're an analytical mind, you know, organization should come naturally to you, but I'll bet you'd tell me you suffer overwhelmed just like the rest of us. Too many options, too many things, too many new technologies. It's not like it just works for you, right? Oh yeah, exactly. I mean, I, you know, I still fight with myself when I should be putting notes and tasks into a sauna. I write them on a piece of paper. Yeah. <laughs> right. Normally they go in a book that I can review, yeah. but if I'm really careless, they go on a scrap piece of paper, right? And then it gets lost. They didn't call that person back. And, you know, even though you have the system in my mind of, oh, I should be using Google Calendar and the tasks there or Asana, write the tasks there. Um, yeah. So even the analyticals are certainly imperfect <laughs> when it comes to organization. Right. And I guess I disagree that there is a perfect. I just want to give everyone you know, you just have my permission to give yourself a break because we live in an age with too many options and too many details. And that's just true. So yeah, sure. you're not broken. Um, it's the malady of our age. So then I think it's, it's important to face the fact that if you would slow down to speed up and by that, we mean put some systems in place so that you're not having to do each transaction as though it were the first time. Mm -hmm. Right. I think I, you and I both said, what are the things that need a system? Anything that you're going to do more than once. Yep. If you're going to do it over and over and over, then create a system for it. There's just no reason to do it from scratch. Do you have favorite systems that you think, because I thought about the list of systems, right? Yeah. And of course, and you've seen my list. It's, it's intimidatingly long, mm -hmm. but that's, that, that's just because you could systematize most things. Yes. Let's talk about what are the basics. What would be the have tos in your opinion? Specific parts of my business that I need to systematize or have a or have a even a checklist for? Is sure. that where you're going with that question? I guess what I mean is for the agent who's listening, if I showed the actual list, their eyes would cross. So mm -hmm. let's talk about the two, the five, the ten. What are the have to systems for a real estate business to run efficiently, in your opinion? Ooh. I think to run efficiently, I think that you have to, you need to have to, the, you know, the checklist for your buyers and for your sellers, mm -hmm. because as you get busy trying to run your business up here, you end up, you screw up, right? Sure. You forget sure. to order the termite and the title company's like, where's the termite and closing is tomorrow. And you're like, oh my gosh, I forgot to order the termite. Yeah. Where if that were in, you know, whatever system we're using, and the system could be a paper checklist, right? I mean, we've said that before, start somewhere. Sure. Um, that, you know, I, I just think that that's a win. So yeah. 
as we get into spring, people are going to get busier. Um, just a daily checklist of to dos. Sure. Me for you know running a business, making sure you're doing your hour of power stuff like that. So you know those are two very different answers, um, right? From you know a, a, a daily checklist to a checklist of how to run buyers or how to run sellers. Right. Um, and I know, and I every time you you know you you ask a question, you you already have an answer. Um, oh. so, so, I'm, so I'm curious to know it. Plenty, plenty of times. Kind of what your thoughts are. Plenty of times not, because this is so subjective, right? Um, I, I think you're right. I think that I was thinking to start with like being good with your CRM and I disagree with myself. I think you're right. I think plenty of agents are not good with their CRM. Yeah. How to log in. They rare, you know, they they wing that part of their business, even though it doesn't help them that they do. But having a buyer process checklist and a listing process checklist is vital because with or without other organization, we somehow managed to stumble into having clients. <laughs> so I think, yeah, yeah. And, you know, a lot of us still wing it, you yeah. know, and um, I'm, you know, I'm very pleased that we're offering these, you know, this new get it done in 21 series that Jerusalem is doing at Remax Allegiance. And it comes with buyer and seller checklists. Yes. You know, we've that class has gotten rave reviews and we, I think we've only done it once. Great. Um, so yeah, she's she's nodding her head and smiling. Um, so uh, yeah, so buyer and seller process, absolutely. Yeah. And and there's more to it. Like we could go deep on that. But your buyer and seller processes need to be spelled out so that you're not having to think, oh my gosh, I've got one. I've got an opportunity to take yeah. a listing. Wait, what should I do? Don't have that panic feeling. I think the challenge for most of us is I don't want to slow down and create it. I right. have a client this week. Um, actually, last two weeks, she has been a coaching client. She has been so focused on putting her systems in place. And she finally admitted to me that it really doesn't feel good. Like because she was being so dutiful, yeah. I, I wasn't noticing the resistance because she was keeping her mouth shut about how much it bothered her. She said, I'm waiting for the green light that I can go back to work. And I hadn't told her to stop working. But I think she just it felt like molasses, like yeah. she just felt so slowed down to be cleaning up her marketing, to be cleaning up the communication with her assistant, to be editing her sphere of influence touch plan and then massaging the database. And by that, I mean, open up your CRM, fix the tags, see who's right. missing. Like this is that like grout work, like, you know, you're scrubbing your floor. Yeah. Yeah. That feel dollar productive? You know, we're all told quit focusing on the silly stuff, mm -hmm. dollar productive activities. But if you don't do those things, when you think you're moving fast, right? That feels slow. Yep. <laughs> but when you're running flat out, showing houses, writing offers, you're wasting time as you go by having to go, ooh, oops. Just exactly. like yep. oops, I forgot. Oops, Agreed. that's a problem. Yeah. So I think I think the balance for her would be. How much time can I spend in a day or in a week fixing the process mm -hmm. and still feel like I have forward motion around? I'm still doing my lead gen yeah, right. still doing appointments. And the thing that I say to everybody, Charlie, lately, who's been saying, well, Amy, do I have permission to or how can I focus on this? Also, I say, I don't know. How much time will it take? And I think we all need to start asking ourselves yeah. that rather than pl place these value judgments on our activities without knowing how long we're committing to. So I think that th that's, this is my hack of the year. How long will it take? In most cases we say, well, I don't know. Okay. Estimate an amount of time you're willing to commit to it. Right. That's a, that's a start. So I think um, systems that every agent needs listing and buyer process, just like you said, yep. some way of tracking your leads, some way of tracking your contacts, yep. right? A piece of paper would probably be challenging. Uh, spreadsheets can be great. Uh, CRM is the tool that was built for it. Mm -hmm. I think CRM is the tool we love to hate. I wonder, Charlie, you know, I got my license in 2004. Mm -hmm. And back then, top producer was just the Mac daddy. Like that, yeah, that was, was it, basically. Was right? And we yeah. loved it. We hated it. Like yeah. it wasn't great. Right. But it was the only one there was. Yep. Um, do you know what people used before that? I don't know. I don't know either. It's been top producer since yeah. I got started. Okay. So I, I think, think a lot of people use probably paper. Mm. Or they just winged it. Or their memory or Yep. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's like they're driving down the road and they see a, a billboard for an attorney named Brian and they're like, I haven't talked to <laughs> you know, there's another Brian and forever. I ought to give him a call, right? It's just, yeah. just kind of, you know, business by luck. 
Right, right. And and the challenge is it just tends to, it, it eats away at your time. I have a story about an agent who was very, very successful, very, very busy, worked really long hours, um, had a business partner that disagreed with growth is with regard to hiring more people. Okay. Felt like um, he was a workaholic and he felt like the two of them could handle it. And she would complain to me about her workload. They were very successful. They did a lot of business, but she was exhausted all the mm -hmm. time. Yeah. And this went on for years and slowly systems did get put in place and they did hire more help. And it came to a point uh, where they were finally really, really doing well. And she owned a ton of rental properties, mm -hmm. had a lot of, like she really was doing well financially and she was so wanted to do something else. She had said so many times, I want to go back to college. I want to do a different job. Yeah. Some more time with my kids. And so I finally said to her, sweetie, you've got it. You've got enough money that in your forties, you could retire from real estate yep. and do something else. And she said, why would I? She said, the thing practically runs itself now. She said, that? I have all kinds of free time. Yep. I do what I want. I suddenly love my job. Um, and so in her situation, there was a little bit of friction between her and her partner that was mm -hmm. the holdup. But for us, I think we have we have that within us. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Where there's her and him, we have that within us. That's the friction we have with ourselves. No, 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 I'll just, I'll just work harder. I'll just put in more hours. That's fine, right? But then the days drag into months and years and, it, and the exhaustion continues. So other systems, system for tracking your expenses. Mm -hmm. When you wait till taxes are due, then it's a huge time yep. suck to try to gather all that together and get that to your accountant. And you know it is, right? Um, some of us, there's a great TED talk on procrastination, by the way. Mm, okay. Some of us function best under pressure. Yep. It's the reason we would rather wait till we're about to miss the deadline mm -hmm. and then pull an all nighter right. than put a system in place. And according, and I don't remember who the guy is, some professor who did this TED talk on procrastination, he said that this panic monster snaps into gear when you're when the deadline is near and suddenly you've got much more focus than you did before so focus is something that challenges all of us so i think that when you commit to putting a system in place and you feel your mind wandering away and you would rather respond to the the alarm you know mm -hmm. you'd rather respond to a deadline then be patient with yourself. Then you just have to look at controlling your focus. It's funny. <laughs> I feel like now we're going to talk about health, uh, which may be way off topic, but maybe not. If you find that your brain is super, super squirrely, you might want to ask, am I well hydrated? Do I drink too much coffee? Could I have improved my circulation before I sat down to this task? Right. right. So some of the things that can optimize your ability to focus um, shouldn't be overlooked. Charlie, I've had coaching clients where I just asked on the call, how much sugar do you eat? Like they mm. were vibrating practically out of like, whoa, 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 you know? So I think we've got to give ourselves a fighting chance. And I don't know, Charlie, do you see this? I think the majority of my clients have a really hard time focusing, but I get assigned a lot of expressives. So yep. do you see that too? Well, sure, yeah. Um... It's often because what they need to be focused on is not necessarily what they enjoy doing. Okay. So like we, you know, focusing on spending an hour a day getting our systems together, that's not fun for somebody that wants to be out talking to people, doing deals, right? You know, they don't want to be tied to a desk. Yeah. Um, calling people that in their minds don't want to be bothered is not fun, mm -hmm. right? So you got to have like the mind shift change, the affirmation of, you know, my clients need to hear from me today, right? My, you know, my clients need my advice for their, you know, housing needs today or, you know, whatever the affirmation is we're going to use. So, and then I, you know, that leads to this, that leads to the squirrel, right? So um, I, 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 I am working on a system but oh God, my phone's ringing and it's a past client. Thank goodness. Okay, now I don't need to work on this past system anymore. Yeah. Right. But then a month later, they're frustrated because they don't have enough Google or Zilla reviews. And it's like, well, where is that on your checklist? Yeah. 
it's either, well, I don't have a checklist or it's, you know, it's not there, right? I, I often say, well, you know, you need to add it to your checklist. And sometimes I, I cheat and I know that they don't have a checklist when I say you need to add it to your checklist, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and shame on me perhaps. Yeah. But, um, and I think just with technology nowadays, it's so easy to be distracted in general with the dings and the rings and the this and the that. And, you know, I think it was the Brian Moran's book. Um, shoot, I'm trying to think of the name of that book, but he was saying that um, for every, you know, one minute of distraction, it takes 13 minutes to get back on task. So when you go and you check your email, every time it dings and it's the Pottery Barn sofa sale, you know, that you're not, I'm not even looking for a sofa. Right. You know, and it's like that could wait. But if you have your all of your notifications turned on, it just leads to all these distractions. And then at the end of the day, you're like, Phew, what a day. But then if you look back to like, really, what did you accomplish? Yeah. You put out some fires. You didn't really move your business forward and you're just frustrated. And then those days turn into weeks and months and years, you know, kind of like you said. So I think going through the, the pain of sitting down and, and, and creating these systems is going to allow you more freedom in the future. Right. right. You've hit on something so extremely important, Charlie, I think, and that is the age that we live in. I was focusing on the technology that is there, um, but the technology has created, I think, an, an entitlement to do what I want, mm -hmm. to do what makes me happy. And, and I remember I used to say to my kids when they were little, not everything is chocolate for breakfast. Like, just do it anyway. Like, yeah, it's not your favorite. Oh, okay. Um, there's a line in the movie Elf: "Make work your favorite." How about "Work's your favorite"? Mm -hmm. and, and I think that we have to say that to ourselves once in a while. I remember catching myself thinking, "Hmm," at the end of the day, would I rather go to the gym or drink wine? Like that's the spoiled brat yep. that we allow ourselves to be. Yep. It's like if I committed to go to the gym, and that's my commitment for my lifetime for my health and vitality, then I go to the gym. I don't ask, would I rather have chocolate for breakfast? Right. So I think it's time for us to be maybe a little bit more of a, of a healthy parent, have a healthy parent relationship with our inner child yeah. who says, I don't feel like it. I don't wanna put a checklist in place. Um, and, and so part of it is a mindset thing because you, you made a really good point about how it's not what they like best. Not everything is what you like best. It's right. a job. Yep. It's yep. not Disneyland. So I think, and the other thing is maybe let's stop pitying ourselves. I don't want to make my calls. Like, you know, you're not working in a coal mine. Come on. True. It's not right. that hard. Exactly. <laughs> so I think it's time to have a, a more adult perspective on what we've committed to do. And when we feel the resistance in ourselves, be that helpful upsa daisy you've got this parent to our inner child and just say, look at you doing hard things. Good for you. Look at well, you. Yeah, and you know, and we touched on this before, not to mention, holy crap, you know, I have a high school education and I'm getting paid two hundred dollars an hour to sell houses. I think <laughs> I can pick up the phone. I mean, seriously, right? I mean, you know, the, the amount of opportunity that we have, um, when there's people that earn far less that have been just, you know, they've spent their entire, you know, young adult lives in school, right, going to law school or medical school or, you know, business school or whatever. So, um, I, you know, I think perspective is, is, is important. And I've thought before, you know, uh, you know, you see the housekeeper at the hotel and you're like, man, she works harder than I do. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. She, she, she busts her butt all day for minimum wage and then she goes home or goes to a second job. Sure. <clears throat> and, you know, I'm complaining about, you know, making difficult, difficult phone calls, right? Or working from a system or, you know, uh, whatever. But, you know, I think that, you know, it's kind of like the compound effect, right? Um, making these little changes over time leads to, you know, big differences, yes. right? Um, you know, having fewer calories every day or, or walking an extra 3,000 steps a day, right? Over over weeks, months, and years, that makes a big difference. And spending a little bit of time on our business and creating these systems over time, you and I aren't saying you need to pause sales for February and just and just put systems in place. We're not saying that at all. We're just saying spend some time creating some systems and make some progress every day. Yes. Because it's going to benefit you from wanting to rip your hair out when you are busy, you know, to be able to rely on that checklist. Or, 
you know, when you want to hire that assistant, you have a system. And it's not like, well, I need to hire an assistant and I need to train that person. But the problem is I have nothing to train them on because I have no system. It's all up here. Yes. And if you hire the right assistant who's an analytical, they're going to hate their job because they're going to be trying to learn from squirrely you with no system. And then they leave. True. And you're like, well, I tried to hire an assistant. That didn't work. Right. You know? So it's like you're, you're just, you know, this kind of continuously spinning your wheels. Yes. And we know there are personalities of all types that are successful in this industry, yes. whether they're single agents or they're running big teams, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, Tom Ferry is an artist and this and that, right? He runs a successful company because he has other people that are running his systems yes. for him, but he has systems. So, you know, start with choose a CRM, get your people in there, commit to living in it every day. Or yeah. put a business plan together. Yes. Or put a marketing plan together, right? I mean, I am cramming this marketing plan down people's throats this year because I know we've been leaving money on the table with these past clients in Sphere. Yes. We know we have been, you know, and we just went to this conference last week. And what was the first thing that the speaker talked about? How many people are in your phone? How many conversations is that per day for you to talk to them three times a year? Talk right. about back to basics. Sure, sure. You know? And let's be clear that putting your systems in place could be basic. Yes. So I think you made a really good point about the compound effect. And this is something that I said um, when I taught putting your business plan in Asana at your brokerage on Monday. Yep. <clears throat> I said that everybody gets overwhelmed. They, they commit to this much work and then they <clears throat> expect to do it today. Like they're just absolutely overwhelmed. Right. And I could share the screen right now and say, this is the plan and, and your yep. eyes would pop out and you, and you, yep get super scared. Yep. You don't have to do it this week. So I said, here's the plan for the year. I want you to do 25% of it in the first 25% of the year. Right. And don't commit to the other 75% yet. So create maybe a timeline. You need to have a business plan that you can follow. Write out a simple business plan, read it every day until it makes sense to you. A subset of that is the marketing plan. Mm -hmm. Even if it's simple, write a simple market pl marketing plan and read it every day until it makes sense right. to you. I've been saying once a day for 30 days, maybe that's five or 10 minutes. Totally worth it to start shifting your mindset around being committed to process. Do your listing and buyer checklists. Absolutely. And then have some place to be tracking your conversations and the people that you have. Those, that's a heck of a start. Yeah. There's so many other things that we can offer and pitch where they could find all the checklists that we've offered in the past, all these things exist that they could download. Dominaterealestate.net. Okay, dominate. It's all there. Yeah, so checklists and processes for also the list of lists, Amy's list of lists that's on there. But I think those five are a heck of a place to start and you can do them one at a time. And if you committed, just say, I'm gonna spend 30 minutes on this one today, set a timer on your phone, do it, and then move on and put it in your calendar, right? Sunday night, Monday morning, figure out what are you gonna work on this week? Yeah. 30 minutes a day, an hour a day, whatever. It doesn't have to be overwhelming. We're not saying whole day, half day, right? And just put, you know, if, it, if it's not in your schedule, it doesn't exist and just spend a little bit of time. Yep. I am very begrudgingly spending a little bit of time every day learning CR Interactive. Why? Because I cannot hold my team accountable to using it without me knowing it. Sure. I, yeah, I, I try to, uh, shortcut it by hiring help to get it set up, this and that. That that was not the right decision. So I'm spending my evenings watching videos. I'm spending an hour a day yesterday working on action plans. So I know how it works. Why? Because this is going to be a big, you know, um, revenue maker for the company, right? Yeah. So um, sometimes we have to do things that we don't want to do because we see the, you know, the larger outcome and the benefit and the long run of having these systems in place. So we're not having to wing it. Well, okay, I've got I've got the parting shot. And it's choose your hard, right? Being uh, building systems is hard. Yeah. Being organized is hard. Being disorganized and missing your goals and having deals blow up is hard. Choose your hard. Right. <laughs> yeah, agreed. Being agreed. Out, yeah. Be, working out faithfully every single day is hard. Being being in poor health and having an aching body is hard. Choose your hard. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. That's good. I like that. Uh, choose your hard. Let's leave it there. It's uh, good to see you. Have a good rest of the day. Bye, everybody.